G'day all, how are you? Hope everyone's doing well and active in the hobby actually. We've got a beautiful day here at the moment. Last, probably our last lot of good weather I think before we end up going, going into our wet season here. So it's a bit hard to sort of give up an opportunity when you're not working and you've got perfect day with very little wind to get out there and fly. What I plan to do in this flight is I've got some new aerials I want to test out on my walk snail goggles and um, just sort of compare stock range with these ones. I don't, I'm not going to go crazy distance or anything like that. I just want to see what sort of reliability it gives me comparing it to the stock set to the stock aerials that came with the goggles. So I'm going to be using my ZOHD Drift. It's running the the 1S Lite camera and VTX. It's going to be running, that, that itself is going to be totally stock. I don't plan on putting a, a different aerial on that, or do I, I do, although I do have a, a couple lying around that I can fit to a larger plane. It's just this, this plane's too small for much more weight. It's almost maxed out at its max uh, limit anyway for payload. The main aerials are I do want to put on some true RCX two airs um, just at the moment the funds are tight and can't afford the expense on those so I've got myself these so I picked up these from AliExpress four triple patch antennas uh, three of them are 60 mil and I ended up getting a larger one here of 150 mil so the 60 mil antennas, they have a 9.4 dBi gain, while the 150 millimeter one has a bit more, it's got a 14 dBi gain. Both antennas can be used either right hand or left hand circular polarized, and they come with a 90 millimeter extension cable, although I'm not using that, I, I ended up buying four 45 degree angled RP SMA connectors. That let the antennas sit a much more flat projection off the goggles. I thought they were fairly good value, so I thought why not give them a shot before I buy the True RC X2 Airs. You will also need 50 ohm terminators to block the signal coming from the right hand circular, circular polarized side of the patch antennas. They don't come with the aerials. I also bought uh, a 150mm left hand circular polarised omni antenna from Flyfish RC. Uh, it has a 2.8 dBi gain. The plan was this, was to put this on the plane, but I'm not going to be doing it with the drift. Like I said before, it's too heavy. It'll go on a bigger plane. Using a SMA female to IPX RF adapter cable, which will connect to the 1S Mini. Although unfortunately in this flight, I did forget a 45 degree RPSMA connector, so I've had to make do with this antenna on the top left of the goggles instead of the, the patch antenna, unfortunately. But it should still give us a, a fairly good idea of what sort of gains we're getting from it compared to the stock aerials. So yeah, it's cane season. This is all sugar cane where, where I live. And they're cutting cane at the moment. You see the trains lined up there. They're empty at the moment, but they're about to fill themselves up with sugar cane. So it leaves a bit more of an area for me. I'm struggling to find a spot to a good spot to fly at the moment as my old grounds have been shut down due to a, a water treatment plant being built there at the moment. So I won't be flying there anymore. There is uh, a flying field. I think I'm going to start using that a bit more, but it's a very popular flying field. I don't like flying with other people so much unless I know them well. We're just about here now, so we've got a quarry on our left up here that I might try and fly around. And other than that, we'll um, try and enjoy the nice scenery and see what these new aerials can uh, provide. Tell you what, some of this sugarcane grows quick. It grows very, very fast. Okay, so I'm gonna get some satellites. Here's the drift, so a little Little hint for me anyway, just be wary that you don't want to overpower your your system. I use a power power brick to um, gain satellites. My VTX uh, is not set up with a switch, that does overheat. Yeah, I might just find this is not a bad way to, to gain your satellites without powering up your craft. So, yeah. It's a bit of a monstrosity of aerials, I know. 
but like I say, I, I do I do plan on getting the True RC XR um, airs, XR two airs. So this will do. These were this was pretty cheap. This is only like twenty Australian dollars for one of these. So these would be fantastic on a ground station, I'd imagine. Get a few of them, and these are ten or eleven dollars too. So they're cheap. So the one I buy them, I do actually have a, a another one which I, I'm missing the forty five degree connector. So. I'm going to have to make do with that, so I'll just put that on the VTX side of the of the goggles here. Right, so we've got satellites. Been sitting there for a while. Let's throw it up. There's a little breeze starting to blow in now, so we're going to be going out with a bit of a headwind. Um, we'll just see what we can comfortably do. The dubbies that come with this, we were only doing 1.3 kilometre range is the most I, I got out of this system. So if I can comfortably get to 1.3 and have you know plenty of uh, a range to go, I'll be happy. Just a comparison, it's not a permanent setup for me here with this, just um, curious to know with these cheap antennas. Pretty good to go. Running 500 milliwatts too, by the way, guys. So just selected angle mode now, and we'll start heading out in a minute. Plan will be to basically just go straight out where that valley is out there towards those mountains. Uh, we'll have to gain a, quite a bit of height at the same time as we get a bit of distance. It's certainly not the place you want your plane to fail because there's no chance you'll ever get it back in this area. So far, 500, 600 metres away. Um, it's all pretty good still at the moment. Bite rate signal has dropped down to two. The picture quality is still pretty good. Just starting to raise some height up a bit now, getting up to around the 90 meter mark. Uh, signal strength of three. As we approach the one kilometer mark, Just got to make sure I don't get anything between me and the plane, uh, like a hill or anything like that. Going straight out to that valley there was the best choice, because we're back in the green sugarcane field that you can see back there. So we've now approached 1.2 kilometres. We've still got signal strength of two, so I have to say at this stage these antennas are an improvement. Approaching 1,400 metres now, signal strength of two, now at 163 metres in altitude. Distance of one and a half kilometres now, at a 160 or 170 metre altitude. Um, got a bit of a drop out there, down to signal strength of one. Just got to be a bit careful here with this mountain. You don't want to be going on the wrong side of that. The 1.5 kilometers, pretty good. It's um, pretty much proves these cheap antennas uh, are an upgrade. Getting a lot of updraft here, which is pushing the plane up. We're right up to 220 meters now above our home point.
So the program I've used to overlay the on-screen display to the video, in case you're wondering why the artificial horizon is all over the place at times, it gets a little bit out of sync up towards the end. So if you're wondering why the artificial horizon is drifting a lot or it's showing the wrong thing, that's the reason why it's got nothing to do with iNav or um, anything else. It's purely the program that I'm using, which doesn't seem to stay in complete sync as the video progresses. So 1.5 kilometers again, we're at signal strength of two. Definitely a good upgrade if you can't afford the X2 airs. So no, no real cutout or anything like that. So 1.7 kilometers now and signal strength of one. So all in all, we got out to nearly 1.8 kilometers, which is considerably further than the 1.3 I used to get. So the on-screen display, everything's locked up here. I've still got video feed and can good control of the plane, but the telemetry side of things has stopped. I don't know whether that's because of the uh, Omni antenna that I've got on there. It's run out of range. I don't know. Um, that's possible, but everything's locked up here at the moment. So I'm, I'm making my way back to home point again. Still got full vision. Video is still good. It's just the on-screen display is frozen up. So I didn't want to continue without that. And we'll bring it back and probably just do a reboot of the uh, of the Goggles X. It's the first time actually that's ever happened, so I'm assuming it's got something to do with the antennas. Why the on-screen display has stopped working? Anyone else had that problem before? If you have, let me know because it's the first time that's happened to me with this walk snail system. Just going to bring it in. I've um, seems like the OSD is frozen. So range has been good though. So I'm not too sure why the goggles aren't real hot or nothing. So. Might just reboot them and throw it up again and just try to try it again. So the second attempt of our flight out here, we ended up reaching another 1.5 kilometer mark. And we didn't get any drop out this time with the telemetry or the on-screen display. So it all seemed to work fine. So I'm not too sure exactly what went on there, but probably got something to do with the aerial because I've never experienced that before. I will redo this again on a bigger plane that's going to use a different aerial on the video transmission one day but at this stage we're um, stuck with only the drift at this stage until uh, we do another build soon. So I guess overall it's an improvement. I don't know why. I still don't know why it didn't. It, it cut out. The on-screen display cut out but it's I can comfortably sit around one and a half kilometers now without it flashing red on me around the edges of the screen so it's definitely an improvement it's for the money i guess it's okay but you know it's still not going to compare to the true rc x airs or anything like that but it's not bad not a bad alternative i guess i don't know about the big one it's a bit bulky you could probably get away with four of these maybe or three of these and one of them i don't know but i, th I just come across it cheap i thought i'll give it a go it's got better gain than that so technically it should be better but it's more designed for a ground station it is 
So I guess the only other improvement you could probably do, um, which I did do on my FX61, which went down, is improve the antenna here. Um, I do have that set up, but this plane is just too light, and it's, like I said before, it's at its maximum payload anyway, so I'm not prepared to put any more weight on it as it is. It, uh, it is quite capable, as you just saw. There is a bit of wind out here now, so it, it comes up pretty quick. And where we went out to in those mountains, out over there, it's, it is a little bit uh, swirly in there, so quite a capable craft that the, the, the Zod Drift, I must say, it's it's running on 2S only. I mean, if you had it on 3S, yeah, you'd have a bit more go, but I'm only doing 2S on this uh, for, for just weight reasons. It, it is over its maximum payload, but it, it's very capable still. Just, um, yeah, video just to try and improve uh, the range and um, just to get a little bit more distance between me and the plane using the, the Walk Snail Goggles X and a couple of different antennas. So stick around, guys. We might try a few others eventually. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that flight and hope it helps anyone looking at buying those antennas. Uh, they are an improvement, so, yeah, just pretty ugly looking on the on the on the goggles but yeah they are an improvement um, for you get what you pay for i guess at the end of the day anyway guys stay safe keep flying and bye for now